can I work on it, Dad? Can I get to the point where I'm cheery most of my my life? So there's good news in that about 50% of our genes are inscribed in our uh, of our happiness are inscribed in our genes. So that we can't control, but that still leaves 50% up for grabs. And so the good news is that while some of us may indeed be born with a sunnier or more sullen disposition, we can all certainly improve in trying to climb Mount Happiness. So of course there are strategies and mindsets that you could adopt, Megan, to be happier from whatever position you start off at. Is it at all related to IQ? Because I have a strong belief that if I had a lower IQ, I'd be a happier person. (laughs) (laughs) You mean because because the more you know, the more you're cynical and the more you hate the state of the world? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes, exactly. Well, so I, I don't think I'm aware of any research that links IQ to happiness, but maybe one of your viewers will correct me once they watch this. But uh, you're certainly right that the business that you're in makes it easier reflexively to to be unhappy because you're you're facing a tsunami daily of all sorts of things that can trigger you in a, in a negative sense. And so, in, you know, one of the reasons why, by the way, I wrote this book is precisely because I had spent so many years navigating and fighting within the culture wars, I thought, why don't I take a shot at actually writing about the opposite end of that spectrum, writing about something that makes people feel uplifted, happy. And if I've done a good job, we'll see shortly, uh, people will respond well to it. Yeah, because we all have our roles, right? I mean, uh, I I don't know. I, I think I have a happy-ish approach to the news. I don't think people leave feeling depressed most days. But on the other hand, depending on your business, happiness is probably not going to go hand in hand. Like, I, you know, Braveheart, <laughs> he, he wasn't like running around skipping to his loo. He had a lot of people to kill. He had to fight for freedom. You know, like we all have our mission that may or may not be aligned with, you know, smiling ear to ear all day. But I like these tips because I believe in these fundamental principles that you've put forward. Now, before we've talked about your background on the show before, but for the audience who sadly missed those shows, um, give us a little bit of your background in Lebanon and and how it wasn't necessarily all that conducive to a happy adulthood. You got off on um, arguably the wrong foot in the in the womb, and then it went kind of rough for the first several years. Do you want me to to tell the story of yeah, in the yeah. womb that I uh, yeah. right so so I was once taken aside by my mother who wanted to sort of uh in like a like any good Lebanese Jewish mother she wants to instill tons of existential guilt in you and that you owe her and so she told me of a story of how close I came to being uh, aborted uh, specifically so my parents uh, they had three children they they got married very young my my mother was almost 16 years old. My dad was four years older than her. And by the time she was 19, she had already had three kids. And then uh, I came along 10 years later as an accident. And so my mother was dead set. And this is in the 60s. She was dead set against having another child. And so she wanted to get an abortion. My father uh, was dead set against that idea. So they kept arguing as the story goes. And then as a last ditch effort, she contacted her best friend at the time, a Syrian woman who lived in Damascus, which is maybe a two and a half hour drive from Beirut, uh, to try to get her, he he contacted her to get him get her to come down because maybe my mother would listen uh, to her uh, since she's her best friend. And my mother said once, her name was Ahsan, once Ahsan came over, she said, don't try to change my mind. I'm never going to change my mind. The next, on that next fateful day when they were going to the clinic, they got up uh, the uh, stairs of the clinic where she was going to get the abortion. And uh, she then stopped and told her fr- her best friend, okay, I've changed my mind, uh, let's leave. Uh, and then my mother always reminds me, you came this close to being fish food. Fish food, oh my which was her, her rather uh, visual colloquialism, or not colloquialism, uh, euphemism for having been aborted. So already that gave me a sense of existential bliss in that I it very, did? I, 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 well, I came close to never having existed. Imagine if I would have never had the pleasure 50 plus years later of meeting Megan Kelly. So that's one. But then later by the age of 10, uh, so I grew up in Lebanon. Uh, so to, to answer your question about my background, uh, yeah. I grew up in Lebanon where we were part of the last remaining uh, group of Jews that had not left Lebanon. And then the civil war broke out. 
point where it became very, very difficult uh, and precarious to be Jewish in the Middle East. We faced some very difficult circumstances. So in a sense, even though I went through some very harrowing periods in my childhood, that actually, many years down the line, offers me a deep appreciation for life because on, in so many places, my life could have ended even before it started, if not ended when I was very young. And so I do wake up with a sense of existential gratitude. Okay, all these people out there think hey, they have it rough. Gad has a mother who's not a very nice person. And on top of that, he grew up persecuted minority in a war-torn country and yet still has found the keys to happiness. Look, you did the tough thing during COVID. You paid your people and pulled your business through the pandemic. And now doing the tough thing could qualify you for up to 26,000 bucks per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. Government funds are available to reward companies with two or more employees who stayed open during COVID. This is not a loan and you don't have to pay it back. The program's complicated, but no one knows more about it than the CPAs and tax experts at covidtaxrelief.org. You pay nothing up front. They do all the work and share a percentage of the cash they get you. Businesses of all types, including nonprofits and churches, can qualify, even those who took PPP loans, and even if you had increases in your sales. You did the tough thing for your employees during COVID. Now let covidtaxrelief.org help get you up to $26,000 per employee. Visit covidtaxrelief.org. That's covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.